So how do the religious deal with their critics? After all, there seem to be almost as many critics out there as there are suckers to believe their religious claims. Nobody is worried whether these ideas are actually real or defensible so long as they get their ego stroked. Yet, from the perspective of the megachurch pastor, how do you handle it? Yeah, let's go find out. Today, we're going to look at a small segment of an interview with Bill Johnson, and I'll talk a little more about him in a second, but this is about how he deals with his detractors. And it's not by having intelligent, rational adult conversations. <laughs> of course it's not. What Bill does is totally worthless, and if I'm going to be totally honest, really predictable. So let's go see how he handles other crazy people in his life, and why all of these people are complete morons. Because that's not exactly a surprise, is it? How do, so how have you applied this? Because you're also, um, you know, public enemy, enemy number one for a lot of people on mm -hmm. the internet, right? Mm -hmm. Which I know you know about. And honestly, until I saw this video, I had no clue who the hell this guy was. I actually had to go look him up. And he's a megachurch pastor from Redding, California, who I guess people get mad at because he's vehemently anti-gay, but honestly, for me, that's just another Tuesday. All of these little unimportant pastors really don't get my notice unless they're really, really, really extreme. Someone like Steven Anderson and his ilk, and you don't see me talking about him very much anymore. I usually don't pay much attention to really dumb people unless they earn it. And I suppose, in retrospect, I might have been vaguely aware of Johnson. Not by name, maybe I heard something about him because it sort of feels familiar. But he's certainly not somebody that I hate with a passion because he's just such a pathetic pissant. He's just another stupid god botherer who's trying to con the rubes. But okay, whatever you say, guys. Mm -hmm. How have you dealt with the constant slander, the constant attacks against you against your church against you know you, you're a, you're a heretic you're this you're that what are you're a, a wolf in sheep's clothing it's always like you're probably get it more than anybody that i know maybe there's a reason for that did you ever consider the possibility that all of that is valid and earned no, of course not. Now, I was recently involved in a discussion about why Christians, generally speaking, have such a persecution complex. They get all kinds of absurd additional rights and privileges, but apparently everyone is out to get them. It's really part of their theology. It's in the Bible. Everyone's going to hate you, even though you're better than everybody else. From the outside, it's really obvious what's going on. These are people pretending to be victims while being among the most privileged around. They are professional victims looking for persecution. And of course, when you're convinced of things, you tend to identify with it, even if it's not real. You know, like their imaginary friends. How have you dealt with that internally? Well, two things. Jesus experienced that, and he was perfect. Well, that's your story, at least. You will notice how all of these God-botherer idiots always say things like this. They relate stories from the Bible as though they are obvious truths, when they're anything but. And it brings us right back to something we talk about all the time around here. This isn't being made for those critics. It's being made for their followers. It's being made for the people who might whip out their wallets and pay this moron. They're only making content for their own side. That way, 
All he has to do is throw out some emotionally comforting platitudes and nobody's going to ask any questions beyond that because they already believe this stupid shit. Well, that doesn't work so well when it comes to people like me who don't buy into any of those platitudes and actually expect rational, evidence-based answers. You know, those things these people just don't have. As imperfect as I am, how could I expect to not experience that? And here we go again. If you notice, all of these preachers who get caught with their hands in the cookie jars, they always play the imperfect sinner card, right? I mean, look at people like Ted Haggard, who got caught screwing male prostitutes, and on went the teary eyes, and he started playing the victim. Or Jimmy Swaggart, who got caught with a prostitute. Twice. He even went on TV to beg for forgiveness, even though he didn't change his tune for a second. Or Jim Baker, who went to jail for tax evasion, and now he's got a prepper food scam going. He got caught in bed with someone who was not his wife, which frankly, looking at Tammy Faye Baker, I can see why, but he pulled out his crocodile tears and the miserable sinner crap too. So why does this keep working for these assholes? Because the people they're using it on are fucking morons. Why? I will never understand. It's logical. And so when you, when you sign up to follow Jesus, you, you sign up to experience the breakthroughs, the blessings, the increase, the presence, and the difficulties. And it's a part of, it's part of saying yes. What I do is I like to take communion often. And when I do, I pray specifically for five key people that are international people. I don't really care who you talk to yourself about. This is something else that never impresses me about the religious. They are so absurdly pious on the outside, but on the inside, they're just scum. They expect us to take their silly rituals seriously. Why? Because they expect people to be stupid. And I'm not. I don't care what kind of dances you do. I don't care if you beat yourself bloody. I don't care if you rend your clothing and cover yourself in ashes. The only thing that matters is whether or not any of these things can be objectively justified, and we all know that they can't. It's all done for show because their intended audience they aren't that bright. They fall for the most ridiculous of things. Why is that? Who have, uh, excuse me, three of the five are international people um, that lead movements that are really targeted against me. And when I take communion, I pray for God to prosper their family, to prosper them, to give them the rich legacy of children and grandchildren that love and serve him well. Well, <laughs> oh, look, more fake tears. It's all an act. If this makes you want to support this jackass, there is something seriously wrong with you. So while he's bawling his eyes out like a little child, or at least pretending to, here's a suggestion for you, Bill. Maybe you ought to address the things that you're being criticized over. Just saying. Because that's the one thing that these people never do, if you notice. They just make excuses, often citing the Bible, which we all know is a big book of multiple choice that can be twisted and turned and contorted to support virtually any position based on which passages you promote and which ones you ignore. So this isn't going to impress anyone who doesn't already take your view of the Bible seriously. You know, like the non-religious. And again, that's why they don't want to talk to us. It's why he's talking to himself, expecting some imaginary intermediary to take care of all the dirty work. Jeez, this guy really is an idiot, isn't he? <laughs> I, I pray for their health, you know, their finances, every area of their life. And if, if you just stay in that position of just constantly <laughs> releasing blessing, not just tolerance. It doesn't help for me just to tolerate people, but to celebrate their, their efforts to honor Jesus. 
And why would they do that? Now, I'm sure that most of his enemies, they come from within the faith. It's just a matter of theological disagreement. A bunch of delusional people arguing over their delusions. That's really stupid, but what can you do? The one thing these people never do is they never come clean, either with their own indiscretions or coming out to defend their own views. Because the religious can't do that, can they? It's all blind faith, zero facts. And I don't care what you can argue from the Bible until you're able to prove that the Bible is actually true. It's one of those things they never do, and they don't even try. Because I don't care where you get your ideas. I care if your ideas are so. So how about you get on that, Bill? Ask yourself some of the hard questions that your faith just can't answer. And that's something we will never, ever, ever see, isn't it? They call me names because they believe. For example, there are many. there's a rumor out there, I don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God. That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. Why? I mean, from your own theological paradigm, it's something you really need to buy into. But it isn't like there aren't a lot of religions out there, lots of supposedly Abrahamic religions, that don't think that way. They do just fine without that pillar of conventional Christianity. And they've got more followers than you do. Now, they do believe a lot of other crazy crap, all theists do, but how is this the craziest thing you've ever heard of if you're actually trying to follow the truth instead of just trying to fleece the sheep? Oh, right, that is all he's trying to do, isn't it? How silly of me. No, I don't believe. I believe he is the Son of God. Eternal Son of God never stopped being. <laughs> However, their zeal against me is for a good reason. They're mistaken, but they're just trying to defend the gospel. I can, I can stop long enough to appreciate that. But the one thing you can't do that none of them can do is to step back and ask, honestly, if the gospel is worth defending in the first place. Because that's always the question that I ask these people, and it's a question that always goes unanswered. How do they know that, and how have they put it to the test objectively to see if what they believe on faith stands up to any kind of critical scrutiny? Because, as we all know, none of it does. These are just crazy people sitting around arguing whether the unicorn in their delusion was green or blue. They can't quite get to the question, was that unicorn real in the first place? Because they simply don't care. That's not remotely important to them. So long as they get that dopamine shot in the noggin, they're happy, and happiness is all they care about. And the more you think about it, the more sad that becomes, doesn't it? I, I wouldn't do it the same way, but I'm, they're not my servant. It's foolish to judge another man's servant. So I, I just I leave it there and just pray a blessing. You mean they don't work for you and you can't bully them into compliance. All of this strikes me as an excuse for why these beliefs ought to be taken seriously, even though they shouldn't. Because at the end of the day, Bill Johnson is just another religious con man, spreading irrational beliefs to people who are willing to hand over their money. That's how churches work after all. It's all performance art. It's some guy standing up in the front of the church, putting on a show, and people pay based on how much they liked it. Whether any of it is true or not, Eh, who cares? It doesn't really matter. It's all about fifis and never about facts. Because who needs facts anyhow? This is all a performance. There seems to be two ways these people go about silencing their critics. Either through religious manipulation, and let's be honest, that's all this interview was, or through endless lawsuits. It's never about having a rational discussion, if you notice, because these are not rational people, and their beliefs are absurd on their face. Yet, we don't get to ask them why, because they have no answers. They just don't care. It's a con job from the pulpit, designed to separate the religiously gullible from their hard-earned cash. Yes, the pastors might actually believe this crap too, 
but they're still benefiting from it. And when these silly arguments come up, it's like a schoolyard fight. It's two little kids screaming at each other and throwing ineffectual punches because they have nothing else that they can do. And I don't think Bill Johnson here is any better. He believes dumb things for dumb reasons and leads a lot of dumb people. But the one thing none of that changes is the fact that it's all still dumb. And maybe he should do something about that. I don't know. It's just another helpful suggestion from Bitch Spot to the religious shysters out there. You're not going to listen because you're too busy ripping off your flock. But hey, I'm just trying to help. Make of it as you will.